At the Monument to Lost Lights in the Tower, you can get some pretty cool stuff. One of the most popular items is the Anarchy Grenade Launcher. The trick to getting this is that in addition to an exotic cipher and a bunch of glimmer, you need 240 spoils of conquest, which you can only get from the raid. You can get these as a solo player by working your way through the first part of the Deepstone Crypt and opening a secret chest. So you can get 10 per character per week. The trick is that the open areas have this debuff called Frostbite, which will kill you in 30 seconds unless you duck into a heat bubble. The heat bubbles are filled with enemies, which you either have to fight or hide from. Making it even worse is you're out in the snowstorm, visibility is limited, and you have to go full out on a sparrow to make it to the next heat bubble without dying. So to help us through this, we're going to use this other exotic called Rat King. This is a whole lot cheaper. It only needs one golden golf ball, a little bit less glimmer, some helium filaments. But it has this great perk called Vermin, where if you kill something and then reload, you can go invisible. You don't need this if you are a Void Hunter, but if you're running on Titan or Warlock, this will make your life a whole lot easier. There used to be a very easy way to avoid the Frostbite debuff. Unfortunately, that got fixed. So we got to do this the hard way. There is a complicated way to avoid the Frostbite debuff, but it involves going out of bounds in the map, and I'm guessing that is going to get fixed pretty soon. So in terms of loadout, you can bring pretty much whatever you want. You're going to have to be killing a bunch of dregs uh, and a bunch of orange bars with void shields. So I'm bringing a void grenade launcher, a sword so I can get up close, and I'm going to start with a scout rifle and then switch to Rat King. Other than that, it doesn't particularly matter. Use whatever you are comfortable with. I usually start the same way, run up, throw a grenade there, run back, and watch for snipers. There he is. If you can stun him with the blinding grenade, it makes it a lot easier to close with the sword. If you try to get them with the sword and they run away from you, very bad. Okay. You can see that I'm invisible because I killed something with the Rat King. Head on in. Do not drive in. If you do, you tend to get trapped inside. Okay. So bubble zero. If I go out, I start accumulating frostbite. When that hits 10, I die. In here, it goes away. So what I need to do is get to the next heat bubble. And I've only got 30 seconds to do it, so you got to go pretty fast. To the right of the rock so you don't hit the mine. Stick left. Stick left into the bubble and park. So my next target is going to be right this way. Oops. Come around. Right side of the rock. There's another mine over there. There's a mine over there. Straight out the middle. First fight. 
if things start getting rough, step out of the bubble. Don't turn this into a fight where you have to be inside at close range all the time. I've got 30 seconds to be out here. Yikes, I'm getting beat up. Go invisible, pull out your sword. Drop them. They're going to keep coming. They're going to keep coming for a while. You can expect to have at least... At least three of those orange bar enemies. Okay, so it looks like they're stopped coming. If you need to go quickly back to the previous one, you can do a transmat. If at this point I die, I will be restored to this area. So the advantage of clearing these things as you go is that you don't have to restart all the way back from the beginning. So the next place I want to be is I want to head towards those lights, hang a left, and then head towards those lights, which are easier to see, you know, once you come out here and hang a left, they're a little bit easier to spot. But with this blizzard coming and going, it can be hard to find them. So out to the lights, hang a left, slight right towards that tower in the distance, and now we're in the next bubble. Oops. Good news is, even if you miss by a fair bit, a lot of times you'll still get the blinding effect. Alright, that was a quick one. Sometimes they just keep coming and keep coming. Okay, this one. Still got a blizzard in progress. I'm trying to wait for the storm to clear up. You can see there's a light out there. If I go straight towards the light, I hit that mine and I fall off that chasm, or fall off that cliff into that chasm. So I actually want to aim a little bit to the left of where the light is, and if I just punch out straight this way, I end up pretty much where I want to be. Then you just drive off the edge, hug the left, drive off the edge, hug the left, come around a little bit. You can see some lights in the distance. That's where you want to be. Here? Oh, there he is. Okay. So this one, you can kind of see there's a light off in the distance. It'll become a little bit clearer when things clear up. The problem is that there's also a cliff right here, and if you drive straight at that light, you're going to die. So what you need to do is drive out, stick left, curve around a little bit, and then once you get here, punch it. Head towards the light in the distance. Steer around the rocks. And then jump the ramp. Next one. Oh, 
Okay. The next stop is our final stop, and I'm not actually going to clear it, because in addition to the usual set of enemies, there's a couple of brigs. And I just don't feel like fighting a couple of brigs. So the plan there is going to be to pull out Rat King, shoot a drag, go invisible, and then go jump to the chest. So you can see there's this light in the distance. Head towards the light, hang a left, first right, head towards the light, jump off the cliff. Nothing but net. And if you fail, you just end up back here and you can do it again. So, not so bad. So, hang left, first right, head towards the light, lean right, jump off the cliff, into the middle of trouble. Yeah, so that happens sometimes. Vehicle is in cooldown. Take two. Alright, jump out between these two things. There's a little gap right there. Jump onto this rock. Up to your left, there's this crevice. Jump into the crevice. Look left. Jump up. Keep turning left and jumping up. And that's the chest. And I would have ten spoils of conquest if I hadn't already opened it this week. Now I'm going to do a run on Hunter. And for this, I'm going to do it completely concealed. I'm not going to shoot anything. To make this work, I'm using Top Tree Night Stalker. The thing that makes it work is the Vanishing Step skills, so every time I dodge, I disappear. Weapons don't particularly matter. Your mobility stat will affect how long it takes your dodge to restore. Um, there's enough time moving between the heat bubbles that it doesn't really matter, uh, but, you know, a high stat here is probably a good idea. If you die, you're almost certainly going to end up all the way back here. Fortunately, it only takes a couple of minutes to run through, so you're not actually losing that much.
So as you can see, the invisible approach is a whole lot faster than the kill everything approach, but it is a lot riskier. If you want to do invisible on Titan and Warlock, you do what I did with Rat King in the, in the final heat bubble, but you do it in each of the heat bubbles. As soon as you see a drag, you shoot it, you reload, go invisible, and immediately head toward the next heat bubble. And with some practice, you can get it down until it all goes pretty quickly. But it does take some practice, and it can be a little frustrating. And that's it.